So what we're going to look at is why these AI writing tools have become so prolific and so popular as well. We'll be using one of those tools called simplemarketing.ai, which was built by a couple of women here in Australia. Um, they've outsourced the actual building of it, but um, it's a great system that they've been able to build. We're going to be using jasper.ai, which is probably one of the top ones we look at SEO. So if you're writing for SEO to, to get more Google search results, then we'll have that one ready for you as well. And finally, we'll use the one that I use the most and the one I bought, I've actually bought, which is called jasper.ai, sorry, Bright Sonic. What am I thinking? I got it on AppSumo very recently. So it's um, a great tool. Um, it can be expanded, contracted, and does a lot of different things as well. And some of the top copywriting and SEO people in the world are recommending it as one of their, their favorite tools to use. So that's definitely worthwhile. I'm all going to show you a live an example workflow of how I might actually use one of these tools to write, say, a an article that I want to write for my website or for Business Station's website or just for a little bit of SEO juice on my various online properties that I use. First of all, why are these tools so popular? What is the point of these tools that makes you think that you go, wow, this is amazing. This is cool. I want to use this, or I could maybe consider using this. Well, it comes down to that computer generated writing created using national pro natural language processing tools, which is a lovely sentence to throw out there is actually one of the wildest things on the internet, as far as time saving. I'll break that down. Computer generated writing. So it's a computer generating writing based upon a whole lot of inputs that you give it that uses what is called natural language processing. So natural language processing is a fairly new technology, um, very much led the way through guys like um, uh, Google has been huge in this. Their natural language processing through things like um, like the, hey, you know, I won't say the word, but in your phone or on your Google home saying things like, hey, G, um, find me this place and understanding that it doesn't just now process keywords, it processes the natural language way that you speak. So if you're speaking as a um, as an Australian, it picks up your Australianisms, the Australian jargon, the Australian slang, and the Australian accent. If you're um, you know, from New York in America, it can work with your accent and understand that certain references you make to things in a slang or localized way are going to make sense to it. So it's able to untangle those words and naturally process. Now, that's one side of the AI is understanding the input from voice. The other part of it isn't to do with voice at all. It's to do with taking inputs and then crunching a whole lot of data from all across the internet to find something and then punch out something which makes sense when a human is reading it. That's been a really difficult thing to do until quite recently. Like in the last two years, we seem to have got the knack of this. We seem to understand how to produce things that are human readable and make sense in human readability. Doesn't mean it's always going to be perfect, but it does mean that it's getting really, really good over time and only better. Like since I first bought Write Sonic and, and even it used to be called Jarvis.ai, but now it's called Jasper. Um, since I've got that as well, things have improved out of sight for, all, for those tools and for others. It basically works like this. You decide what it is you want to write about. Then you say, what kind of content do I need this tool to produce for me? So I've, I've got an idea in my head of the, the kind of topic I want to write about. I know what my output needs to be, whether it needs to be social media posts or, a, you know, just some inspirational, you know, thought um, kickers, or it could be a full blog post or, or article on a website or a full website page or something like that. And then you add in a few parameters that tell it the, the kind of things you want. So it could be that you want it to be very casual. You want it to be very formal, very business-like. You want to avoid certain words. You want to use more or less what we call synonyms, which is um, using words that mean the same thing, but the different words. They might be a little too technical or you might want to make them less technical. So they're super simple to read. So an example would be, Let's just say I'm a yoga studio. And in that yoga studio, we've just got a brand new beginner's yoga class. This new beginner's yoga class, um, we want to advertise through Facebook. So we've decided we want to add a Facebook ad written about this particular new beginner's yoga class. Fun, okay? Now, there's certain parameters we want included in there. We want it to be mentioned that it's led by Jenny Young, who is the um, the yoga master in that particular ashram. Um, the air conditioned, because we don't want people feeling like they're going to be super hot in there. This is not hot yoga. This is just regular yoga. <laughs> and we want to be able to you know, make sure that this is all put together in Wong. 
So repeating again, a new beginning yoga class that I want to advertise on Facebook, mentioning at least these points in it. So I tell um, Write Sonic or any of those other tools to go away and produce me a range of Facebook ad options that I can choose from. And what comes back to me is something that looks like this. So it will be start your yoga journey with our beginner's yoga class. You'll learn the basics of how to breathe and move your body on the mat. Jenny, young yoga teacher trainer with over 20 years of experience, will guide you through a slow paced yoga class. Call now to book a spot. That sounds really natural. And that what it's done is said, I've given you 90% of what you're after in 51 words and 221 characters. How do you feel about this? And I can rate that and say, yeah, that's the one I want to use. Or I move down to the next one. The next option is if you're new to yoga and want an easy to follow and not too strenuous yoga experience, this class is for you. The class is headed by Jenny Young, who has over 20 years of yoga experience. Bring your own mat and towel. The center is fully air conditioned. Invest in your health and sign up for this beginner's yoga class today. That's about 86%. It feels it just when you think you've got like the best possible like version of this, it produces an even better one for you. And it gets better and worse. And some of them are, are going to hit the spot. Some of them are not going to hit the spot. But what the process is, it's going out there and well, I won't spoil the process because I've got some slides that kind of explain how all this works. But now you get the idea. And when I put those parameters in, this is what comes out. And I'm going to do this exact search for you um, in one of the tools a little bit later on as well. So how does it work? It's not witchcraft. Sorry, mate. It's where it looks for searches for similar content across the web. So it looks for other yoga classes that are beginners yoga classes, starter yoga classes, mentions things like bring your own something, which is going to be things in common across the internet for that. So it takes all those options of all the beginners yoga classes that have been advertised and mentioned on the World Wide Web in some way, shape or form, and it processes all that information into something that's new, um, not necessarily something original, but something that's new, a new version of that. So it's not copying what's out there. It takes all the things that are out there, looks for the patterns, looks for a version that's going to be new and not plagiarized. It checks it for plagiarism to make sure that nobody else has done this and then gives you a range of options, just like it did with the yoga studio and the beginner's yoga class. So it goes out, looks across the web, finds similar stuff, turns it into something new, turns it, checks it into uh, plagiarism. So when you've got the uh, the plagiarism part of it is um, just making sure that yes, while it's taking its inspiration from a lot of other things, it's not exactly copying anyone's particular copywriting. And then the fact that it gives you a range of options then breaks down that plagiarism even more. So you're definitely not copying anyone else's stuff. You're getting something which is new. I wouldn't say original because it's containing a lot of stuff of other people's. But the finished product is a new piece of copy. It's not a direct copy of anyone's work at all. So real world examples where this got used. My state bank in Tasmania um, ran a campaign which they wanted to um, you know, get increased home loan, um, uh, sorry, home loan applications online. So they used three different ads and three different landing pages with three different lots of copy. So that copy was written by an ad agency copywriter who is, um, works with one of the ad agencies that they work closely with. They then compared it with copywriting that was done by an AI copywriter. And then they did a third one, which is AI written by the AI and edited by the staff. So they took what came out of the copywriter, they just checked it to make sure it's factually correct and didn't actually, you know, break any, you know, financial or fiduciary laws. And then the third version was one where they go, well, I'm going to go a little bit beyond that. We're going to use this as the starting point, And then we're going to use this to grow our own piece of copy out of that. So what happened is about um, twice as many people signed up based upon just the AI copywriters copy. And then it was even more than that. It was three times the amount. So you're talking about 300% more people um, actually responded to the copy that was written by an AI, but edited by a real person on staff. So that wasn't someone in the, in the ad agency. It was actually in a staff member going and looking at them and going, how can I improve this? And they did. And it actually improved it out of sight. Now, this doesn't work in all cases. Um, what generally happens is that <laughs> someone gets it written by the AI copywriter. You need to do the editing because what comes out may have a bit of problems. Now, certainly when it comes to banks and lending and financial stuff, you can't afford to have mistakes. You can't actually say certain things. And the AI may try to work on things like American rules uh, rather than Australian rules. So there's further development to be done that break that down. But another example would be something I ran myself with my own one of my own businesses, Cellular One. 
So with cell one, I wrote something myself. Um, that particular thing had three conversions that came back from it. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, there was three, uh, it was, it was written by AI in, um, by myself, sorry, on the landing page of the website. So the information you got there on the website was written by myself. And also the ad that I ran on Facebook was written by myself. I then did a, an A-B test and ran two other versions against that. The first one was what was written by the AI copywriter, just straight plain. So I went, okay, here's all the parameters, put it in. This is what it spat out. Chose the option I thought was best from the list. And it got significantly better um, performance than what I did with the one that was written by myself. And I'm a pretty good copywriter and I've been writing copy for over 20 years. So it's like, that was, I wouldn't say it's a slap in the face. What it was is a wake up call that, you know, copywriters all get stuck into their way of doing things. Every copywriter does get stuck into the way of um, they write, the, the voice that they use, the, the techniques that they use. And if they're not always learning from outside sources on further techniques on copywriting, then they can kind of get, you know, to the point where their copywriting may not actually be doing any well. And they're continually repeating the same mistakes over and over with people. Um, and those mistakes are never being corrected. Now, when I went into that AI copywriting and the third case there, and I edited it to make it feel a bit more flowy and nice and, and all that, it actually made the performance worse. So in the previous situation where in my state bank, they actually improved it by putting a person into the picture. When I put a person in the picture, it actually performed worse. So that could be saying a lot about me and my copywriting being stuck in another era. Maybe that's exactly what it was. Or it could just be that <clears throat> when I'm writing about my own things, I've got blind spots and they're things that I don't see as potentially being problems when it comes to promoting my business. So if we look at those then, does that tell us then that AI is going to replace copywriters? I'm going to say probably not to this because... There's some things that AI can do really, really well. And there's some things that it's absolutely terrible at. Let's consider Siri. Now, Siri is based on, on Apple phones and Apple um, devices as being a helpful um, a helpful tool to let you, you know, buy more stuff, um, find things, to get your way around the country, to look up maps, to look up businesses, to look up everything in Google search, even all that. And it's a mess. It is a hot mess. Like it's, it's run by AI on your on your Apple phone mostly with some of it going out to Google to do the natural language processing as well. But it's mostly performed on your, on your phone. And it's absolutely terrible. The results that come back are not particularly great. The same with um, Google's Assistant. Google's Assistant can be very mismatched in the way that it works with things. It brings back things that are relevant, doesn't quite understand some of our more interesting uh, um, native Australian words and names of places. So it does struggle with that a little bit. So we find that AI isn't perfect and it certainly won't replace copywriters anyway anytime soon. Now, the two cases I just showed you, the only case where it might replace a copywriter is where it maybe replaces me. I might be the copywriter who's in danger of losing his job. So what do these tools do really well? What they do really well is gives you ideas and outlines. They give you the, the starting points, the, the outlines of your, your article or some options for you to sort of start the process with. Um, in, in most cases, that is, that is it. You're actually working with something that's very, very good at making suggestions for what you should do next. It's great then at being the first draft. The first point of call, the first part that you're going to do, it writes out that first version for you to then go and edit, proof, proofread, flesh it out, make it longer, make it shorter, do anything you need to make that thing work even better. So that's what these tools happen to do really well. They also happen to be really good at saving time. Honestly, when I'm coming up with an idea for a blog post, um, I've got a particular workflow that I'm going to show you very shortly that I use certain tools to give me the, the ability to be able to produce a blog post almost every day. One huge thing it does, it gives you flexibility of content. It's not just something that writes blogs. It's not just something that writes social media posts. It's not just something that writes product descriptions. It's not just something which writes uh, social media posts or thank you emails. These tools should be able to do almost all of that. Um, and they'll have tools and templates that are specially geared for those kinds of correspondence or those kinds of content. So it's very flexible in the kind of stuff it can produce, which AI generally is not really good flexibility. 
Um, but when we give it the parameters to work within, like these templates have, it says this is going to be a, 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 um, <clears throat> a thank you email written in Greek. So if you're able to do Greek, it's going to produce that in Greek. And if you can read that, you can then edit it. It's got very tight parameters. It says must be Greek, must be thank you, must be in the tone of what the Greek uh, language and the Greek uh, spoken language is like, not just in formal um, you know, business or um, high-end academic Greek. And then it's very good at repetitive tasks. If you need to do a lot of these, if you need to pump out 30 blogs a month, it's really great for helping you with that. If you need to pump out 28 product descriptions of different shoes, you put in a few parameters, it will do the hard lifting for you. The biggest advantage, I think, of all AI writing tools would have to be that there's no writer's block. You get to the, to the to desk the next morning, you go, I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to start writing because I'm utterly uncreative and have no idea what I'm doing. Then you've got a problem. Then you've got this issue where you go, oh, I can't get any work done. AI copywriters break through that because they're not people. They don't get writer's block. They work completely on data and crunching you know, probabilities and crunching you know, uh, natural language processing attempts uh, on a computer. And those computers don't get tired. You and I get tired. Um, but we, they, we, they don't, they don't have that creativity. So they don't have a creative or writer's block. That's something that's a purely human experience. So what they don't do is I find they're quite poor at writing a whole article on their own without some sort of intervention. So they'll give you the beginning, they'll give you the points, they'll give you the outline, they'll, they'll attempt to write a whole article for you and you'll still have to go back in and do a little bit of work for it. Um, what they also don't do is specific styles of writing. So I find that there's not really a great breakdown, although you can find some ways of working this for yourself. They generally don't write in an emotive style or a convincing style necessarily, unless it's quite formulaic. So if it's like, um, you know, present problem, present solution, present price and ask for the sale. If it's that, in that sort of very standard blocky kind of email that's reaching out to sell someone something. So it doesn't do very specific styles of writing particularly well. Um, and, and the other things it doesn't really do well is that it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't do it in a way, way that you, can trust it without proofreading. I haven't had a single thing produced from any of these tools yet so far, which I haven't had to adjust in some way, even in a small way. Now, does that make it not worth it? Well, no, not at all. What it is, is it takes time off. So if I had to sit there and think for five minutes, doodling my thumbs, looking at my phone, trying to work out to be inspired what I'm going to write, then I decide what I want to write. And then I decide that um, it's going to be um, this topic and I'm going to take this approach and I'm going to take this part, this opinion that's going to go through this particular narrative and storytelling style. And in the end, by the time I've even started it, by the time I've actually chosen within the five minutes that um, of the topic I'm going to select, the AI has already written it, produced it, put a lot, a lot of um, different um, versions of it for my consideration and then all i need to do is just go in there and choose which one i want and and pick that one out and do a bit of editing around it instead of having to spend two and a half hours writing an article i can do it in 20 minutes or 15 minutes depending on how long it is it's just one of those things that you're able to do so quickly when you have this tool to help you do it it does produce some awkward phrasing now sometimes when it looks at um it's not particularly good at, say, writing a speech. It's very good at writing things that you will read silently in your head from a piece of paper or on a website. But if you're actually reading this out loud, the, some of the phrasing is a little awkward. Some of the sentences are a little long. Some of the, um, the alliteration and rep repetition of sounds and um, awkward combinations of letters and words, it's not great at that. It writes it specifically for someone to be able to sit there and read in their head, not to read with their tongue. So it's going to be a little bit less, um, let's say human centric, which brings us to emotion. Uh, AI writing cannot actually produce emotional stuff. It, it can't do it. It doesn't know how to um, elicit emotion because it doesn't understand what emotion is. And, and emotion is a many faceted and many splendid thing that is very hard to replicate in the world of AI. Robots can't feel feelings. So they find it very hard to try and describe feelings. I would say the sadness feels like your guts are being ripped out and, and that they're being replaced with a big black hole that you can't be filled with anything in your life right now. And what will happen is an AI will look at that and try to break it down to its logical parts and go big black holes, sadness, 
guts being ripped out and it's going i don't know what to do with this this makes no sense to me this is really really scary wording well it's not very really scary ai isn't scared but it just can't work out what to do with that because it's too emotive it's too metaphorical it's too uh, it's picture wording it's it's not describing things as they are it's describing things as they feel and the biggest problem probably is that nothing is truly original nothing that you're going to pull out there to apply how small your niche happens to be or how specific your stuff has to be then you have to understand that this is not going to be original it's not going to be it's not going to be a once-off that's so unique and original that people look at it and go that is brilliant what it will do is create something new now new doesn't mean original it could be um you know i could create a new brand of potato chips it's not original because well, there's what, how many other brands of potato chips, 50 or so already out there. So I haven't produced anything original. I've just produced something new. And that's what this kind of machine learning and AI and machine learning and AI are the same thing. So artificial intelligence and machine learning, exactly the same thing. So if you ever hear those two words interchangeably, Google tends to call it machine learning. That's the words they, they prefer to use. Um, AI tends to be used by maybe Facebook will use the word AI quite a lot. Um, these tools tend to use the word AI as well, as opposed to machine learning, because they want you to feel like it is intelligent. It's not learning. Because if we think that something is learning, we think, well, it's not ready. It's not complete. Whereas we go, it's intelligence. Oh, then it must be ready and complete. So that's just the marketing term between the two. Whereas Google wants to push the idea that, yes, it is always learning. It is never perfect. It's never all the way there. It's actually a learning process using machine learning. So will this take over your computer? <laughs> this is a legit question I will get asked by someone who's very, really afraid of AI. Will this AI take over my computer, take over my life? Will we end up in the matrix and all that? Well, no. This particular brand of AI is not what we call general AI. General artificial intelligence is where something is self-learning, self-adapting, and for all intents and purposes, acts like it's human. The Terminator, the various characters in the Matrix, where they are generally intelligent. So they're not um, intelligent in just one thing. They're not good at just the one thing. They are generally adaptive and learning to respond to human inputs and to mimic human behaviors very, very convincingly because these uh, intelligences that now feel the simulation of feeling and emotion is so convincing that it essentially for all intents and purposes is right there. So if it's not that, what is it? It's called narrow artificial intelligence or narrow machine learning. And this is where something's not attending to be a human. It's not pretending to be a, um, a thinking, feeling organism. It's not trying to simulate any of that. What it's trying to do is do one thing and do it well. So it could be the AI, say, for instance, in Canva, where I can remove the background of an image and just have it cut out around the person. That is a very narrow AI. That's a very, it's an AI process. It uses artificial intelligence to recognize where hair is and the shape of the body and the difference between where a body would end and where the background would start, even if they're the same color and there's no really determined factor of where that may be. But it understands if I follow the line of that, of that, that shoulder down there, I can, uh, I can compare that against millions of photos of people who've been cut out out of photos and know that that's kind of roughly the shape that, that that would make. And so I can replicate what it is in those millions of other photos and come up with a very accurate cutting out of something. That's a very, very specific AI. That's not going to take over your brain, take over your, your, your Bitcoin wallet. It's not going to take you out down to Coles and do the shopping for you. That's not general intelligence. That's just very intelligent on doing one thing. And this is what just about all um, artificial intelligence is. And very few people are actually working on general artificial intelligence simply because it's, it's that sort of thing that could be quite dangerous if it's taken over, or it might be one of those things that we cannot control as humans because it then becomes a life form just like us. So I won't go into the ethics and the philosophy of all that, but it's safe to say that Siri, Google Assistant, Facebook um, ads platform, and these writing tools are what we call narrow artificial intelligence. These things cannot produce emotions. They cannot produce um, taking over your home or your computer or you know um, leading your children down a dark path. They don't do any of that. All they do is just this one thing. It's like um, teaching someone how to knit 
um, is not the same as teaching them how to crochet. So you design a, a machine that's designed to knit, it probably cannot crochet. If you design a machine to play the piano, it probably can't play the trombone. They're very different instruments that require very specific skills to be able to use. So that's now that I've told you that the Terminator and the Matrix isn't happening, we're going to take a look at the real live versions of these. So we're looking at one called Simple Marketing. So I've logged into Simple Marketing over here. Um, I've signed up for, I've got the, the, the free version at the moment. I did used to pay extra for it, but I found it actually wasn't the tool that I wanted to use that much because it is a little bit limited. So if I get started in here, all I'm giving is these options, a blog starter, a Facebook post, LinkedIn post, inspirations, which was kind of cool. I thought that would be a lot better than it is or write along. So that's something I haven't even explored. How to explore a user persona, how to write headlines, how to write email subjects, welcome emails, thank you emails, nurture emails, all those different things that we can do. So I can follow some guys here, what people did. So why did Tic Tac and Top ban my business account? So that could be um, a, an article that I could write about that. These are things that other people have done. Or I can just say, you know what, I've got some saved content when I've done things in here. So here's a bunch of things I've saved in the past where I've done test runs and what they may want to be doing. So I could do local SEO as the art of ranking well. So let's have a look at what I saved in there. So that was supposed to be an inspiration for a, um, for a piece of content that I might want to write myself. But I didn't know what I wanted to write about. I can put that in there. So let's go back and do a bit of inspiration. Let's just say I've got writer's block and I just have no idea what it is I want to write about. So I go on the inspiration. I go key phrases. Well, I've got to write something about uh, social media, um, students, uh, maybe something to do with teenagers, uh, Instagram is going to be about that. Um, insecurity. Yeah, okay, that's that's what I do. So insecurity, um, that'll do. What is it? Generate some content. So it's going to sell me a little bit of uh, inspiration I can write about that talks about social media, students, teenagers, and Instagram in, in insecurity. Now, I spell insecurity incorrectly, so I might want to put that back in. Security. There we go. Let's generate that content again. Now, every time I do this, it's going to use my points. I've currently got 49 points to use. So I had some leftovers. Um, so there, it's writing some very short things. It's writing like things that are almost like um, inspiration for social uh, social stuff. So over on the right, I've got all the teenagers who feel the need to compare themselves to unrealistic images when they, they, they see on social media. Embrace your uniqueness. You are not an Instagram filter. You are beautiful. That's awesome. It's, it's actually writing a really nice social post. I could pull that out and put that on Instagram or Facebook or something like that, or even talk about it on TikTok. And that would be a beautiful post. Something a bit more. In a world where you can appear to have a full life surrounded by hundreds of friends of Instagram, it's easy to feel insecure and inadequate. So that's a bit of, yeah, okay. And it means appreciate your real friends and don't worry about seeming popular. Great. I can use that as a way to inspire my next thing. Social media has made it. See, it's given you lots and lots of options. Look at all this. It's given me tons of options. It just used one credit because it was one generation. So it took me from 49 down to 48 points. So that's good. And I can pick up any one of these that I want to. As I go further down though, you'll start to think, see that the, the best ones are at the top and they get a bit weird when they get down too low. Social media in some ways is good, but it can be bad. It can promote insecurity, jealousy, and hatred. It's good for letting people post about what they think, feel, et cetera. So if I think yeah, that's a good way to start my writing, I can take that and go, that's what I'm going to write my article about. I've got my inspiration. These AI tools are excellent at these. Now, you notice there's going to be a voice here. So I can actually use the voice to say that word. So Ty. AI is a creative, open mind and tends towards spontaneity and idealism. Ty is a persona they're using. Now I might want to go, this is Ty writing this. So it's a particular style of writing as of someone who is um, a certain kind of voice. Now in here, I've got more of them that I can use. I can go, okay, Ephraim is creative and intelligent, bringing imagination and vision. Or I can go, Daisy is compassionate and imaginative. Lorraine is sensitive and idealistic. Um, Chaim is unconventional, creative and perceptive. Ephraim is creative and intelligent. Faith is empathetic. Gail is confident and influential. So I'm going to take Gail and I'm going to select her as a persona. And what we're going to do, we're going to write that same content again using Gail 
well as it. Now, this is the one thing that I say that simplemarketing.ai does particularly well. It is really, really good at going into different personas. So you can pick a persona and say, write like this person would write. Someone who is compassionate, but also conventional. So in a world, a world of teenagers using social media, we're all behind a filter of social media. Being yourself is insecure and doesn't and doesn't get likes or follows us. So don't post it. So this is this one that doesn't make a lot of sense. I'd need to fiddle with that bit. Do these students feel like they should have spent their time on something else? Are teenagers who refer to everything related to the real world as the real world, simply trying to break away from the older generation. So it's then started that you can see that Gail is older and writes from a point of view that is a bit more conservative. I give them my best advice. What I know my teenager would, my teenager self would have hated me for it. So I try to offer it in a way that they're likely to listen. The last persona we had writing, notice it wrote more from, you know, sighing about, ah, oh, we teenagers, you know, we, we, so we're too, we compare ourselves too much on social media. In this case, Gail is writing almost like a parent saying, look, I gave, I give them my best advice, but I know that if I had to talk to my teenage self, I would have hated me for giving that advice. So I try to offer in a way that they're likely to listen, but who knows? It's an exasperated and almost giving up parent. I can change the AI voice again and get someone else to write it. Each time I do it, I'm losing my points. So this one's a very short, very small one. Let's go back and look at some other options in here. Now I might want to write a Facebook post and the Facebook post is going to be from... Let's go from Leah, structured yet sensitive, balancing an organized approach to words with passionate and enthusiastic content, valuable for influential and persuasive writing. I like the sound of Leah. So Leah is going to be my persona this time. And what I'm going to do is going to ask for um, something to be written about a Facebook post, a Facebook post, which is all about um, my lack of control when it comes to eating donuts. So I'm going to put lack of control. donuts um let's see if i can actually yeah lack of control donuts um sweet tooth uh weight gain and something about um healthy living so I'm going to say, I want you to generate me something about having a lack of control over eating donuts, having a sweet tooth, having weight gain and healthy and heavy and healthy living as something I would like to look at. Now, Grammarly, I've got as a plugin, so it's going to help me to look at that. So this person, Leah, who is structured yet sensitive, who has a balance with her enthusiastic approach and passionate content, um, who's very influential and very persuasive. Let's see what she says about that particular topic. So I look at this one and it's going to bring up, you know, today she's written over half a million words. I don't think I'll get anywhere near that. And now that it turns around, it's going out there looking for social media posts. It's going out there looking through Twitter. It's going out there looking through descriptions on YouTube posts. It's going out there looking at blog posts, um, websites all over the place. And it's actually pulled in some ideas. Look at what it's writing. Wow. This is generating content all about an article. And the article is going to be about the lack of control donuts. Not only donuts are delicious, they're so quick and easy. You can't start eating one donut and all of a sudden you're eating three or four. You can't control your sweet tooth. I've trained myself to only allow myself to eat one donut. I eat half of it, but then I put the rest in the fridge for the next day. By doing this, I only eat one donut and still have some the next day. It's actually writing an article on how to um, avoid weight gain get a healthier living and control your sweet tooth. Uh, it's actually written this article. It's actually suggesting photos that I can pick up from the internet that will help me to do that. Things like it doesn't now, now look, notice it hasn't written the whole thing. It's actually gone and written some of it and I can select an image. So I'm going to select the apple. I'm going to go and maybe pick up the cupcakes. Um, I notice I've not seen any donuts on here. So I'll pick the flowers as well because I think they're appropriate. And then I can copy that article and then turn it into something. Now it's saying um, maybe here a, a question, a little, a very small, a very small um, article. Here's the pictures I'm allowed to have. It's from Pexel, so I'm allowed to use them. Why I quit eating donuts? As a kid growing up in Michigan, there were two things that were almost important, more important in school. The first was donuts, and the second was the Detroit Red Wings. So that sort of thing just has no nothing to do with me because it's talking about a place that I didn't grow up in, a life I didn't live. The four life lessons I learned from my 12 month donut diet sounds. 
funnily really weird. Actually, I gained weight, got out of control and learned a lot about myself. So that could be an interesting article that's been taken. Like that's actually not an article that anyone else has actually written. No one has written that article. This would be completely new content. So you're starting to see that you can choose what you want to do. Now, that's a pretty, pretty human way. You read through those words. I quit my job and spent 12 months eating only donuts. I'm kidding. Or am I? Actually, I gained weight, got out of control and learned a lot about myself. At the end of the year, I bought a donut and posted about it. I saw a spike in page views. People started commenting about the story behind it. This is not just about donuts. It's also about learning from our mistakes and figuring out the life lessons we can bring for them. This is the story behind my viral video. They got 10 million views on Facebook. Now, I'd need to pull apart that because I haven't had 10 million views on Facebook, but I might have a story that somehow relates to that. What this starts to tell you is, can I believe anything I now read online? Possibly not, because it could be AI just doing it. Someone sitting in there going, okay, quick, generate me an article about um, the many ways to use lemons. Um, using, lemon, uh, using leftover lemons um, for desserts and i generate that content it's going to go and scan potentially millions of recipes that use lemons for desserts with a focus on the idea of leftover lemons that's going to generate this for you i had two bags of leftover lemons for the photo shoot i normally toss the lemon peel and use the juice in a salad dressing but this time i decided to make a sweet treat from the leftover lemons instead and guess what better than the original recipe i figured out how to make the most delicious not too sweet lemon squares filled with a rich lemon curd but there's no no butter or flour, so it's still a pretty healthy dessert. How do you use your leftover lemons? That could be something which is amazingly used on a, a cook's um, social media post. You could just put that on there. It's a fantastic way of doing it. Or you can look further, fresh, easy, and fun desserts using leftover lemons. So I just came up with that off the, off the top of my head. Now it's like, whoo, that could be amazing. Let's do that. So once we look at all this, we look at, okay, the change of voice. I can have Leah write it. I can have Isaiah, Jaden, uh, Lorraine, or Chaim, or Daisy, or, or Ty AI, who is the one I usually use because I find that he's quite um, a general one. He's the, probably the, uh, the one who's a, a default. Let's go back to our get started. Let's have a look. We've got 45 points left, so we can still do a little bit more in there. Maybe I want to write, um, I want to write, a, well, there's some kinds of blogs in there. Let's do write along. Let's see what that does. Now, how much should AI write in a tile? What we want to do is I'm going to write, and then it's going to, we're going to generate content that goes with it. So I'm going to go so about a middle. So this is what this means. I'm going to start writing um, about, um, Social media is possibly the one technology that has come out technology that has come out of the internet that has the most mixed results. Then I'm going to generate content. So it's reading that, generate the next bit. Turning, 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 turning. This is a pretty good um, little tool that they've got in there too. And remember, there is a free layer to this and I'll show you what the pricing is just next. You'll be able to use this to do some experimentation of your own. So social media is possibly the one technology. When you hear about Twitter, it's either people complaining how much they love it or how much they hate it. There's a lot of people who feel it's a great way to keep in touch with friends and family. Then you have others who feel it's a waste of time and a distraction from meaningful relationships. How interesting. So it's actually picked up that I said it's mixed results. It's a technology that's come out of the internet and it has mixed results. What it does, first of all, it picks it out and says, when you hear about Twitter, see the people complaining or it's people who love it. It said, here it is. Here's the mixed results we're talking about and then continues on to write it. Now I can add a little bit more on here. Um, Facebook, on the other hand, um, other hand has influenced our society perhaps more than any other social network so let's see what it writes about from there generate a bit more content so I'm down to 45 credits i think that generation so each generation i do cost me a credit so you get i think 50 credits to use Many people use Facebook for personal use and marketing and business use. Facebook can be used for almost anything. Kiss Metrics recently conducted a survey. So it's continuing to write along as I'm adding more content of myself. I go, okay, I want a little bit more. Okay, great. That's Facebook. Let's go. TikTok, however, is the champion of um, Generation Z. What does it say about TikTok? And now it's just going to generate the next bit. 
turning, 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 turning. So this is something that's helping you fill in the gaps and adding things like facts and figures and, and, and the meat to your, to your, to your, to your ideas. So we go TikTok, however, is the champion generation Z. According to a report by The Verge, TikTok has been downloaded more than 300 million. It goes in and actually this is creating a coherent article that you can pull out, maybe do a little bit of editing, add some photos, and you've actually got an article you can work with. So I'm looking at this and going, huh, I haven't used this particular tool in Simple Marketing AI. I may actually use this because it's a great way when I've got that mixed day where I'm kind of got some ideas I like to write about, but I don't want to have to go and do all the research. I'll let this do the research for me. And I just put the ideas in place and let it fill the gaps. So I'm setting the mood, I'm setting the theme, setting the topic, but I don't have to necessarily fill in all the details and do all the research and go and get the quotes and go and get the, the, the percentages and the reports and all that thing. I let it do that work for me. So that's pretty cool. I can pick that up now and just copy and paste it into um, Word or whatever tool I want to do and start working on it. So it's a great tool for doing that. There's many more in there. But we need to move on to our other tools. And our next tool is going to be, well, actually, first of all, let's look at the pricing of uh, simplemarketing.ai. Now, these are all in um, US dollars. So the free level gives you uh, five credits per month. So I actually had a bit more credits in there because I'd actually been with them for a while. So I'd accumulated some credits and was paying. Um, so I've got you know quite a few credits to work with. Five credits will generate you know between fifteen to fifty content pieces based on their length. So it'll be um, it might be fifteen articles or fifty social media posts. So that free plan is great. I'd use that. I think it's really good value to have a really good test drive of how these AI writing tools work. The starter plan gives you 20 credits per month. So given that that's um, four times what you've got in there, which could be, you know, 15, what, 60, article, or 60 articles you could write, you could write 200 social media posts a month for $17 a month. So this is all really, really good value. Um, and this gives you so much to work with. Um, at the moment, they've got you know quite big specials. It's usually 37 a month, but they're trying to get some new people on. So it's now at the moment, 17 a month. So I'd say that's definitely something worth looking at. Jasper has a bit of a different, uh, different spiel here. Jasper's less about writing creatively and more about writing for, um, for results on Google. So you see that when I'm in Jasper, now I'm in there, I can look through their templates. So I can look at a dashboard that tells me all my use and all that. I've got a free, I've got a plan that um, a trial that ends in five days. So I can upgrade that to get 5,000 bonus credits and everything's based upon word length. So if you're generating a certain amount of words, it'll give you a certain amount. And I'll show you how all that works when we go back to the pricing. So let's go back to our templates. You've also got recipes, which you can set as what you want to do. So you can say a featured recipe is, for instance, a blog post, a product review blog post. The hero's journey is a great recipe. It's 12 stages of a character and story arc development. So it actually now starts to help you to write as a creative writer. You can rewrite or expand blog posts or other content. And I'm going to open that recipe there. I'm going to use that as my first one. So the recipe in there is telling you what it is. I'm going to run this recipe and I'm going to um, see what it does for me. So to run the recipe. And in this recipe, it's going, okay, here's what we need to do. So I need to set up some like um, some sentences in there. I need to do some work on it. So I need to look at the audience. Who is the blog for? So it's giving me a little test on there here. What I do is compose. I'm going to make it um, how long I'm going to make it. I then go and work on highlighting text that I want to rewrite. So I'm going to bring that in from another source. I'm then going to look at um, highlighting uh, and formatting text into headings and subheadings. I can then also use asterisks to prevent Jasper from seeing above that point. So we go, do not do anything that's above this bit. It helps you from generating duplicate stuff. And then also look at number five, we can look at what we call a power mode. And that's to generate templated outputs alongside the document. So you actually see some suggestions of what the stuff could be across there. So I'm going to go into my website. I'm going to very lovingly pull out one of my, my blog posts and I'm going to rewrite it. So we go to my news section. Um, I'm not going to use it for this, uh, this particular one. This particular article, I used AI to write it. That's the same... Uh, image I used a little bit earlier. Using, so, does social media affect your Google ranking? I'm gonna pull this one out. So I'm gonna pull that out, uh, copy all the text, quite a long article. There you go. And I'm gonna put it into Jasper. 
So it's going to say, who's this for? So who's this blog post for? It's for um, small businesses looking to increase their Google ranking. Uh, it's for small business owners. Actually, let's just say small business owners. Uh, the motivation is increase their Google ranking. The product and solution that's been offered is a free uh, SEO audit that I'm going to provide them. Now, the heading at the top of it, it's going to be, does, sorry, I'm not talking to you, Google, your AI is playing up on me today. Does social media affect your Google ranking? That's what I'm going to call it. So does social media affect your Google ranking? And then the original content intro paragraph, um, which is up here. I'm going to put that one in. And then I'm going to rewrite the above. That's right. That's what I want to do. Delete the original section and content after the first response, compose until complete. And then it takes me through what I next need to do. So let's uh, look at what it's going to do as I set it off and compose it. So I'm going to generate these. So it's going to look at my H1, what my topic is about. Um, it wants me to write a little bit more. And I can add more into it. Now, as, as this goes on, that Jasper can be a really, um, a really difficult thing to write. So I can say, uh, let's just say from over here, I'm going to start this one again because I've kind of messed this one up. Jasper is one that changes a lot in the way it does things. So I'm going to go um, into my recipes again. Go into uh, the not the hero's journey, the rewrite expanded blog posts. Okay, and run. And so now over on the left, I'm going to go. Um, does social media affect your Google ranking? Um, the article is about the impact of social media posts on search engine optimization. And the tone of voice is going to be, so notice how you can put in the, the tone of voice as being Joe Rogan. So I'm gonna put the tone of voice as being informative and casual. I don't want it to be too hard to read. Keywords are gonna be SEO, Google, Facebook, Twitter, um, and social media. Okay, but first you'll have to unlock your device. My phone keeps thinking I'm talking to it. I want it to be pretty much a shorter article. So let's compose it now. We're going to compose this based upon their recipe that's in there to compose what we're going to do. So continue writing more on your own. So it wants me to add more information in here. It doesn't have enough in there, but it has made an end. As, uh, so try, trying to do an end and it's sort of trying to do the beginning. Now you can see that this is clunky as this is not a really good recipe to use. So let's try and do something a bit easier on a template. The template could be, we're looking for something that's simply to take a piece of content and rewrite it to make it more interesting, creative and engaging. That sounds like a great idea. So let's pick up all that content that I had on that, that particular, um, on that particular uh, blog entry on my site. Go down, all the way down at the bottom. I'm going to copy it in, put it in the content improver. Let's see what it does. So it's allowed me to do 400 words. It's only a short one. So I just look at that one and then go, the tone of voice needs to be um, curious. So let's go. Let's see what it's going to pop out over there and tell us what that particular output's going to be. So we look at it. It's going to look at, it's going to, prompt it and say, what are you going to do with it? It wants to do that. I don't want boss mode. I just want this thing to work. So you see these different tools. Some of them work more easily than others. Some of them are more complicated than others. Some of them don't really give you a lot. There's an explainer video, but it doesn't really tell you a lot about how to do this. It's not giving me any options here to do much more because it's all hidden behind. We just uh, change this so I can actually see the bottom of my screen. Generate the AI content. So it's going to do two outputs. It's going to give me two options. It's going to generate more interesting and entertaining versions of what I've already written. So if you ask Google, it probably tell you social media has no impact. Then instead of saying Google's official stance, the impact is that it won't have any effect. 
Google has been denying that social media impacts search engine rankings for years now, but are they wrong? Many people believe so. And given the recent discussion about how it might be able to assist your website's rise in search engine result pages, there seems like a good chance these days. That's a fantastic tool. It's really like giving you a whole different look and feel on it. If I say I want to go curious, I want to go aggressive. Let's see what it does with the tone of voice is a little bit more aggressive. <laughs> so I went for that second option, which was quite aggressive. Um, Google might tell you that social media has no impact on your ranking, but the truth of the matter is we don't know for sure. Some SEO experts have suggested their theory about how these signals may assist in rising up through SERPs and attaining higher rankings on search engine results pages, or Google's been denying that social media is... So it's taken those pieces and added a slightly more... I guess, a, a slightly more aggressive and accusatory tone to it. Now, there is tons more of these recipes and templates you can use. One which might be very useful for you is a blog post outline. We're probably going to say in here that I want to write a thing that's called um, the um, do essential oils have any real health benefits? And the tone of voice is going to be um, academic. So we're going to take a very academic look at whether essential oils have any real health benefits. Let's generate a little bit here. So it's going to give us now, try to make your changes. Okay, gave us no results. Let's just say it's going to be curious. Let's go again. Might be struggling with this one. No, it's actually struggling to do something on this. So we'll just go, what essential oils are the most popular? And I'm going to make an informative tone of voice. So it's searching, 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 and it's found some. So it said, here's the outline you could do. You could write a paragraph about what are essential oils and what they do. How are essential oils extracted from plants? What are the most popular types? How you can use them? Are there any risks where you can buy them? So it's actually said, here's the six sections that you need to write about. So if you really struggle with you know, coming up with um, what you should do in terms of writing an article, what the sections are, what how to, to, to lay out the article. That, just in 30 seconds, allowed me to have six major points that I can write about in an article. So it's given me two outputs. Give me that one. Um, it's only given me the one, really. So I asked for two. It gave me one. That's okay. I've got six a list of six different things that I can write about much more comfortably. So now I've got the topics I'm writing about. I go away and write them. Now, what I can also do is copy that stuff. I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to go back to my templates and I'm going to look at the long form assistant. I'm going to um, either follow through a, writing a blog from start to finish. Or I'm going to start from scratch. So I'm going to begin writing on my own. These are the points I'm going to use. I want to write this in the tone of educational. I want to go um, the benefits of essential oils. Then we'll look at the start, the typing, the title can be actually, that is the title. The content description brief is what I've just put in there, this stuff here. I'm going to take that out, put that in the content description brief. So it takes that information I've already generated in one thing and lets me go essential. I'm not even going to put in keywords because I don't think we need them. It's going to write me now a medium length article based upon those points. There we go. So it's starting to do that. So I can go, okay, I can continue writing a little bit on my own to give it a bit more. So each of its own set of benefits and health um, aspects. So I go, okay, I can compose a little bit more now. So it's going to write along with me, like the one that did in um, in simplemarketing.ai. So it continues to write. So I add a little bit more. Uh, they can be inhaled straight from the bottle or used in a read dispenser. Um, Read disperser. So as I've done that, add a little bit more. And it continues to write the article, adds more to it. You can also add them to a vaporizer, massage oils, diluted in water. One of the best things about them, you use them as a general health and well-being booster. That said, always consult a doctor, a doctor for actual medical advice. And it's given me the chance now, compose more. Give me some more. So as this is writing this article, it's going into some of the most popular essential oils. It's writing a completely cohesive 
set of um, AI generated writing for my blog or for whatever I want to use it for. So I'm going to hop out of this one because this one's um, it gives way to my favorite, which is Write Sonic. So Write Sonic, I think, has pretty much provided what I think is the best article writer, the new AI article writer, which they call best quality. It to me is probably the best one out there. So what I'm going to write is an article about um, pressing flowers um, for for fun. Okay, let's see. Let's like generate some ideas. So it's going to so just on those few words. It now generates a few ideas I might want around. The complete guide to pressing flowers: a fun way to remember Sumba. I like that. That's really cute. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to now generate some introductions to to this particular article I want to write about pressing flowers. And that's where I'm going to be stuck with now um, a few ideas on how to start this. I have a long and streary where the summer is finally here in celebration of the season we're created. This guide is a way to remember all the beauty of summer. That's beautiful. Uh, the days are getting shorter. The leaves are changing colors. Summer is winding down. It's a bittersweet time. It's the end of an era, but not without a fight. You still have plenty of time to enjoy summer while you can. And one way you can do it by pressing flowers. I like the sound of that. So I'm going to pick that one out and now I'm going to generate the outlines for the article. So what are the things I'm going to write about um, as topics to cover this off? The four methods for pressing flowers, what you'll need, how to press them with a heat press, with household objects, how to press flowers using the press flowers book. Love it. Let's see that one. And now I get to go, okay, this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about those in, in the subheadings. Let's write the complete article. Now, this doesn't always get it right. And I will say that every single time I've done this, I've had to go and then do some editing with this as it generates that article. But my, this is probably my favorite um, method of using this because it allows me to do a step-by-step -step wizard style thing. So it's given me an intro. It's given me, here's what you'll need. Here's how to press flowers with a heat press. Here's how to do it with household objects. Here's how to do it with a flowers book. Conclusion, you can just, it's written a complete article that I can then put onto a website, submit to somewhere to get um, published if I really want to. It's a now a complete thing. Now, if I want to check to make sure that that hasn't been plagiarized, I'm going to copy that. And I'm going into, I use Grammarly and it's got a built-in plagiarism checker. So Grammarly, I'm just going into the app there and I'm going to log in and I'm going to say, I want to check this particular article for plagiarism. So I go, yep, here it is, paste it in. And I want it to set some goals. It's going to help me rewrite it as well. So I just want to check for a plagiarism at the moment. So I'm going to go down here. I'm just going to scan through my entire article and it's going to look for anything that seems, you know, particularly similar to what it is. So it's only 1%. It's it said, so that's pretty good. One place, which is an article called how to immortalize your wedding day bouquet. So I'm like 1% of the text matches that source. And it's that. It's literally this sentence that's been highlighted. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to keep that. And it's got one thing here. What is CDR, carbon dioxide removal? Um, that looks like it's got absolutely nothing to do with it. It's just using the words, no matter what method you choose is important too, is what it's picked out of there. So I'm going to, I'm happy with that. So that has checked billions of articles around the internet and said, this is unique content. I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's original content, but it's unique. It's, it's something with no one else has written this article or anything quite like it. So I could pick that up, put that in my blog, and you can see how you can build up entire websites full of very easily generated content that you don't have to think that much about. You don't even have to know that much about it. And that's one of the reasons why I particularly like using um, the, the right Sonic a version of this. I think it's one of the better article writers. Um, I can make those articles longer and I can go much, much further into it. I can copy it, use it elsewhere, download it to Word, all that sort of thing. Um, right, Sonic also does a, a bunch of other kind of things. So you've got the article writer, Facebook ads. Um, you've got something to rephrase content like the other two had, a sentence expander. If you've got a really short sentence, you want to make it longer, well, then it's got something for that as well. Product descriptions is a very popular and very good usage of it. So if you want to compel people to buy, you want to inspire them by what you've got there, that's great. Google ad titles, Google ad descriptions, even cold emails, real estate listing descriptions. There's so many options there for you to write some really, 
really good things. It even uses some of the um, techniques like the pain agitate solution, so which is a main, um, a very high conversion, very compelling kind of copywriting. It's got lots of very specific, like short LinkedIn posts. I actually use this for some of my LinkedIn posts to write them. And it's been very good for that. You can extract keywords from content you've already written and says, okay, from this content, here are the keywords of that article. So if you want to you know, optimize for those keywords, you can do that. There's SEO tags. There's all sorts of things right down to your YouTube outlines and your YouTube ideas. If you want to make a YouTube video about something, here's some ideas it'll give you based upon a few keywords that you just enter in. So there's so much in there for you. Press releases, it even lies that. Listicles, which is one of my favorite types of copywriting. It makes it really easy to write. Um, so you can produce something which is quite compelling and very popular for people to be reading because people love a top 10. So you can do all these kinds of things in there um, and, and be able to um, work with it as, as, as a tool that really helps to lift your content and helps to give you lots more content as well. So unfortunately, I can't show you any more because we've come right to the end of it. I'll give you a bit of pricing here. First of all, on, um, on our friends over at uh, Jasper. So it starts at $29 per month US, which gives you um, 20,000 words a month. For 100,000 words a month, it goes up quite considerably. But I guess most of us will fit into the 20,000 words a month by writing a few blog articles, right? When we go to Write Sonic, however, it's got a different pricing plan that's based upon this. Lots and lots of different plans. There's a free trial you can use for 10 credits and you're going to have a bit of a play with it. $15 a month. Now I've got a 40 credit lifetime. So every month I get 40 credits a month, but I use those up pretty quickly. So I buy an extra $15 worth a month. That gives me a hundred foot more. So 140 credits a month, which gives me 50,000 words plus a whole lot more as well with my 40 extra credits. So it gives me a lot of that. It integrates with things like SEM Rush, which is an SEO tool. Um, and also gives you uh, this long form writing assistant only comes with these paid plans so that particular one that's really really important that you get that because i think it really writes well the other thing is too it writes in 25 different languages so you can see it gets really expensive up at the maximum level but that's because it's kind of you know unlimited you're not really going being limited by anything up there down here it's the credits are down there for 45 dollars a month i could go unlimited and that's probably what my next step is because i use this so so much